Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get out your King James Bible. Turn it to Isaiah chapter 1. This is going to be the Isaiah series. And let's get going. Isaiah 1 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. So that was, he was around for four different kings of Judah. Verse 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Now we're going to go back to some of these and compare them. In the introduction, I mentioned that the book of Isaiah roughly corresponds to the books of other books in the Bible. Isaiah 1 roughly corresponds with the first book of the Bible, which is Genesis. So, I have nourished and brought up children and they have rebelled against me. Does that sound like Adam and Eve? Hmm. We'll get back to that. Verse 3. The ox knoweth his neighbor, and his ass his master's crib. A crib. What do they call a baby's bed? A crib, right? But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your present presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. That kind of sounds just like what's happening in the United States, does it not? Strangers are devouring our country in our own presence. Verse 8. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as San Francisco, and we should have, oh, I'm sorry, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom, give ears unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. Now this is called 
parallelism. You know, they said, we should have been a Sodom, we should have been like Gomorrah. And then he says, hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom, give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. The Lord's comparing Judah to Sodom and Gomorrah. And some people will say, oh, no, no, he's actually talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. No, because God had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. They don't exist. So he can't be talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. All right, verse 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offering of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or in lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Uh, what does it mean by treading my courts? Well, obviously the temple was his court. They had a courtyard inside the temple. So if they were treading it, that means they were walking inside his court. Here it is, they're acting like Sodom and Gomorrah. And then they bring animals to sacrifice. Instead of being a change of heart, it just became a, a ritual. 13. Bring no more vain oblations. What is vain? Useless, worthless. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbath, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it. I'm sorry, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. It doesn't sound like God was pleased with their church services, does it? Verse 14, your, your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. And what are they talking about here? Well, there was three times a year that people were supposed to come before the Lord to worship him. Uh, tabernacles and Passover. And there, were, and there was another one, but I'm not thinking about it right now. But it doesn't matter. You get the general idea. But they had polluted them so badly that the Lord, he's calling them your feasts because they weren't feasts unto the Lord. Or perhaps, you could think about this, perhaps, uh, perhaps they're not even doing the Lord's feasts. Perhaps they're doing the devil's feasts like Ishtar. We call her Easter today. Verse 14, Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, you ever been in church when they spread forth their hands toward heaven? And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from mine hands. I'm sorry, put away the evil of your doings from mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, 
They shall be as white as wool. They, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Oh, I'm sorry. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. As white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. How is the faithful city become an harlot? What's a harlot? A whore. It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it. But now, murderers. Thy silver is become dross. God is likened unto gold. And when he wants us to become like him, he considers that the refinement of silver. We'll cover that in a bit. But what is dross? Well, if you know anybody that's in metallurgy, when they, for example, when they take iron, iron rocks, they throw it into a, a vat, a big pot, so to speak. They heat it up and melt it. And then the iron is heavier than the dross. So the dross, which is the non-iron elements, will float to the top and then they skim those off. And then all you have on the bottom is the pure iron. And that is the dross. And that's what they do with silver. Thy silver has become dross, thy wine mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts, bribes, right? And followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. You see, people, that's how the rich and the greedy are. They will take what little a widow and an orphan has because they can never have enough. Think about the super rich in this world. They're not content to have enough money that they can never spend in a lifetime. No. They want to they want to take it all. They want to take even what little the father and the widow has because they're evil. And when the Lord gets through with them, well, they'll have nothing. But until that day, we'll see what happens. Verse 24, Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. Isn't that interesting? The Lord has enemies. To hear the church world, Oh, the, God doesn't have any enemies. He loves everybody. God loves everybody. He wants everybody to get saved. Really? But the Bible says he has enemies. Does God want to save his enemies? That's a good question. I don't think the churches have the answer. Verse 25. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross. And take away all thy tin, T-I-N. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. 
Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressor, transgressors, and of the city sinners, and of the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired. And just remember this. Witches consider oaks sacred. I think that's what this is in reference to, because oaks are sacred in Satanism. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired, and ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. And the strong shall be as tow, and the maker of it as a spark. And they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. All right, let's go back and take a look at Isaiah and start looking at the parallel accounts in other books of the Bible. All right, Isaiah 1, verse 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Okay, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Now, you could argue that, uh, well, the Lord said, Oh, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. Well, in Genesis 1, chapter 1, and chapter 2, the earth, uh, was, uh, the earth and the heavens were created by the Lord. Okay. And then, in chapter 3, we read about where the children... Of the Lord, how they rebelled against him. So let's take a look at Genesis chapter 3. All right, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, let's use the Bible to identify who this serpent is. Revelation 12 and verse 9. All right. And the great dragon was cast out. Cast out of where? Heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Why is it an old serpent? Because it had lived for a long time. And uh, it's been around since the Garden of Eden. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Now, I've had people tell me that the devil and Satan are two different beings. Are they really? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Bingo. There you go. All right, so let's go back to Genesis 3. Now... Was Eve talking to a snake? I don't think so. It's a figure of speech. Like when Jesus appeared before John the Baptist, when John the Baptist was at the River Jordan baptizing people, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Was Jesus turned into a four-legged animal? I don't think so. Genesis 3, one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. 
And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Very important, people. The first time that the, the serpent is mentioned in the Bible, what does he do? First of all, he questions God's commands. And then he says, God's a liar. Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So right here, the serpent promises her secret knowledge that God is withholding from her. Ah. You know what? That's exactly what Satanism and witchcraft is all about. God's holding you back. He doesn't want you to do this because he knows you're going to be missing out on something. Verse 6. And when the women saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise... She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, It's her fault, she did it. Oh, that's the Bob translation. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, yeah, it's your fault, God. You gave me this woman. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's her fault, but you gave her to me, so it's kind of your fault, too. That's, that's kind of how I look at what he's saying here. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, It's, it's the devil's fault. The devil made me do it. That's the Bob translation. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now listen to this, verse 15. This is the first hint at a Redeemer, a Savior, coming one day. And I will put enmity. What's enmity? Hatred. Extreme hatred. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Okay, is the serpent a tree? Is the woman a tree? Do they have seed? Think about that. Enmity between the serpent's seed and the woman's seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. I take that to be a shadow of the coming Redeemer. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire 
shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Why would he say that your desire is going to be to your husband? Why? Whose desire was she? Who, who did she desire before, before this? And he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life life. All right, let's go back to Isaiah. So in verse 2, the Lord says, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. So in verse 4, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, isn't that what basically what we just said? They are Adam and Eve had perfect bodies, would have probably lived forever had they not sinned. But they corrupted themselves. All right, let's go to verse 9 and 10. And then we're going to skip on over to Genesis 19 and take the account of Sodom and Gomorrah. All right, let's read Genesis 19, the account of Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. So this is the evening, right? And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, they turned in unto him and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Uh, the difference between unleavened bread and leavened bread is yeast, and leavening is also all always likened unto sin, and. Uh, the ladies that know about baking, it takes time for bread to rise. And uh, it's easy to make unleavened bread, which is kind of like a cracker or a wrap or a tortilla. You know, it, it's very quick to make. Just basically take flour and water and oil and mix it together, maybe egg and uh, roll it out and then throw it in the oven. And uh, you could either have it soft or crisp, but it's very, very fast to make. Whereas bread, you have to, uh, you got to put the yeast in it and you got to wait for it to rise and then you got to bake it. And remember that leaven is always likened unto sin, always. I know there's a there's a story that Jesus was talking about the woman that put three measures of leaven in the meal, and then they want to make you think that uh, in that instance that doesn't apply. I don't think so. I've never seen where leaven in the Bible is ever a good thing. Never. All right, verse 4. But before they, uh, the angels and Lot, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round. In other words, they surrounded the house, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came unto thee, which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Uh, 
when you want to know when it says uh and adam knew his wife and she conceived yeah so they wanted to uh they wanted to have sex with them anally and a lot went out of the door unto them and shut the door after him and he said and said i pray you brethren do not so wickedly now something you should know sodom and gomorrah were among the canaanite cities it was in the land of the canaanites and you know abraham and lot his the land was too small for them so they had to separate and uh you know they were in the land of canaan named after the canaanites so oh boy so there's people that'll tell you so-called bible scholars that well you know it really wasn't god didn't destroy sodom and gomorrah because of sodomy really what he destroyed them over was because they were not kind to traveling strangers well you know if you got traveling strangers and you want to rape them anally that's not being kind to strangers so you know maybe they're partly right there so all right all right, so let's skip down to verse 24. Then the Lord rained upon San Francisco and, oh wait, I'm sorry. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Sounds just like what the um, end time's going to be, doesn't it? In 2 Peter, it talks about the earth being destroyed with fire. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. Now, in Genesis 10, 19, and the border of the Canaanites, the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou cometh to Gerar unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adma and Zeboam, on, even unto Lasha. So Sodom and Gomorrah were part of the Canaanite areas. Keep that in mind. And God was never happy with the Canaanites. So what places does the Bible compare to Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, in Revelation 11 and verse 8, talking about the two witnesses that confront the beast and the false prophet, and it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Where also our Lord was crucified. Huh. Where was Jesus crucified, our Lord? Well, when people start telling you that uh, Rome or New York City or Mecca are, you know, the great city spoken of in the book of Revelation, ask them who their Lord is. So their Lord was crucified in New York City, huh? Their Lord was crucified in Rome, in Mecca. Now, of course, they'll try to argue and say, well, you know, it was the Romans that crucified Jesus, so technically he was crucified in Rome. I don't think so. Let's look at Paul. You know why they hate Paul? 
you got this Hebrew root sacred name Yeshua stuff because these people hate Paul. You know why? Because they can't blame Rome for killing Christ as long as you've got Paul around. Go to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. This is why they hate Paul. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. Ah, their own prophets. God never sent any prophets to Rome. No. For ye, have, for ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Does that sound like Rome killed the Lord? No, it doesn't. So, um, in Jude chapter 1 and 7, we read, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Wow. Let's go to... Second Peter chapter 2. And this is another book that the uh, Paul haters will tell you doesn't belong in the Bible. Let's skip Second Peter 2 and go to verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. Let's take a look at uh, 2 Peter 3. I guess we'll go to verse 7, because I don't want to make this, you know, a huge study. 2 Peter 3 and verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Tell that to the people that claim that all prophecy is fulfilled. And they'll point out and say, well, you know, the Lord said his coming is soon. And, you know, it's been, it's been almost 2,000 years. Well, to the day, 2,000 years is like a, a couple of days. I mean, you know, yeah, his coming is soon. You know, but they'll try to have you look at things with their eyes, not the Lord's eyes. Verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, 
and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness." Back to Isaiah 1. Uh, in verse 11, it says, To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offering of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. Isaiah 1, verse thir uh, 12. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. Where is this a reference to? Well, I believe Ezekiel chapter 8. Turn there, please. All right, let's skip around a little bit. Ezekiel was told he was taken by the Lord in the Spirit. Uh, and then he was shown what they were doing in the temple. Now I don't want to read the whole chapter, but let's go to verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 9. And he, the Lord, and he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So what's your first clue? Wicked abominations that they do here. They had taken the Lord's house and turned it into... A wicked abomination. Verse 10. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols, idols of the house of Israel, portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. This is what they call the Sanhedrin. These were supposed to be the leaders, the rulers in Israel. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the, in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, Shaphan, and every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? every man in the chambers of his imagery, imagery. For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. So they're saying, Oh, the Lord can't see what we're doing. And then there's people that'll tell you that basically the earth took the, the earth, wound it up like an alarm clock. Boy, that's going back. I don't even think you can find wind-up clocks anymore, do you? can you? Yeah, uh, young people, let me tell you something. Before there was electric digital clocks, they actually had mechanical lock uh, clocks that had a spring, and you'd have to wind it up, and that's how it would run. There was actually watches like that, too. Um, you had hands on a clock. Everything wasn't digital back when we were kids. Uh, when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Yeah. But they say that it's like the earth was wound up like a clock and then the Lord 
walked away and is just letting it run. And that's what they're saying. The Lord doesn't see us. The Lord has forsaken the earth. Verse 13. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Uh, Tammuz has reference to Ishtar and is part of the Babylon mystery religions. You can read about Tammuz and uh, Ishtar. We call her today Easter. Yes, people, Easter is not a, a thing. Easter was a person. She was the goddess of spring fertility. That's why her feast day, you know, ham dinners and hot cross buns, uh, that's why she was honored with bunny rabbits and eggs. Remember what the Lord said? Your feast days, your feast days, not the Lord's feast days, your feast days. They were a stench in his nostrils. So, you know, in verse 14, Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Uh, Tammuz was killed. And here it is. These people are crying because a satanic person died. Verse 15, Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east. And they worshipped the sun toward the east. Have you ever seen people doing sunrise services on Easter? That's what comes to my mind when I read this. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing for the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence. And have returned to provoke me to anger, and lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, and though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. Wow. Back to Isaiah 1. Verse 13, bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. Isn't that what they were doing in the dark with the, the 70? They had incense burning. It was thick with incense. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meetings, your new moons and your appointed feasts, like Easter, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And yet people will tell you that those that keep Passover is what these people are, uh, What is what this is talking about. No. 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 God's talking about the satanic things like Easter, Easter, uh, Read Jeremiah 10 next time you uh, want to celebrate Christmas. Think about that. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Isn't that what we just read in Ezekiel 8? 
wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from mine eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be as white as wool, and though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Now, they're going to be as white as wool, right? What about Revelation 3, 5? He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Revelation 7, 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Let's go back to Isaiah 1. Now remember, in Isaiah 1, in verse 22, um, well, let's read 21. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Thy silver is become dross. Thy wine mixed with water. Uh, and it says, the, the princes are rebellious and the companions of thieves. So, what's this about silver and dross? Malachi verse 3, in verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. Now that's, what, that's how you refine metals, how you purify metals. You melt them with a the fire. And that's what the Lord's going to do with the earth. He's going to refine it. He's going to burn away the dross. He's going to burn away evil and wickedness like Sodom and Gomorrah. The earth is going to melt with fervent heat. For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. What is a fuller's soap? Uh, some of you ladies know. Uh, that's what you would use to make a garment white. Verse 3. And he, the Lord, and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Ah, and he shall purify the sons of Levi. Now, those were the priests. Those were the ones that... Levi was the, the, the tribe of priests that were to serve the Lord in the tabernacle. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them, purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old, and as in former years. All right, that's, uh, I guess this is going to be the end. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.